that it? said Zaphod in surprise. That is it. Didn't look too bad, thought Zaphod. And I get in there, do I? said Zaphod. You get in there, said Gargrabar. And I'm afraid you must do it now. Okay, okay, said Zaphod. He opened the door of the box and stepped in. Inside the box, he waited. After five seconds, there was a click, and the entire universe was there in the box with him. Chapter 11 The total perspective vortex derives its picture of the whole universe on the principle of extrapolated matter analyses. To explain... Since every single piece of matter in the universe is in some way affected by every other piece of matter in the universe, it is, in theory, possible to extrapolate the whole of creation, every sun, every planet, their orbits, their composition, and their economic and social history, from, say, one small piece of fairy cake. The man who invented the total perspective vortex did so basically in order to annoy his wife. Trintragula, for that was his name, was a dreamer, a thinker a speculative philosopher, or, as his wife would have it, an idiot. And she would nag him incessantly about the utterly inordinate amount of time he spent staring out into space or mulling over the mechanics of safety pins or doing spectrographic analyses of pieces of fairy cake. Have some sense of proportion, she would say, sometimes as often as 38 times in a single day. And so he built the total perspective vortex just to show her. And into one end he plugged the whole of reality as extrapolated from a piece of fairy cake, and into the other end he plugged his wife, so that when he turned it on, she saw in one instant the whole infinity of creation and herself in relation to it. To Trintragula's horror, the shock completely annihilated her brain, but to his satisfaction he realised that he had proved conclusively that if life is going to exist in a universe of this size, then the one thing it cannot afford to have is a sense of proportion. The door of the vortex swung open. From his disembodied mind, Gargravar watched dejectedly. He had rather liked Zaphod Beeblebrox in a strange sort of way. He was clearly a man of many qualities, even if they were mostly bad ones. He waited for him to flop forwards out of the box, as they all did. Instead, he stepped out. Hi, he said. People, Bronx, gasped Gargravar's mind in amazement. Uh, could I have a drink, please? said Zaphod. You... you have been in the vortex? stammered Gargravar. Ah, uh, yeah, you saw me, kid. And it was working? Uh, sure was. And you saw the whole infinity of creation? Oh, sure, a really neat place, you know that? Gargravar's mind was reeling in astonishment. Had his body been with him, it would have sat down heavily with its mouth hanging open. And you saw yourself, said Gargravar, in relation to it all? Oh, yeah, yeah. But what did you experience? Zaphod shrugged smugly. Oh, it just told me what I knew all the time. I'm a really terrific great guy. Hey, didn't I tell you, baby? I'm Zaphod Beeblebrox. His gaze passed over the machinery which powered the vortex and suddenly stopped, startled. He breathed heavily. Hey, he said, is that really a piece of fairy cake? He ripped the small piece of confectionery from the sensors with which it was surrounded. If I told you how much I needed this, he said ravenously, I wouldn't have time to eat it. He ate it.